Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, aka Jay Phoenix, and this is going to be your astrology forecast for the full moon in Aries this Friday, September 29th of 2023. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Happy full moon in Aries. Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful week. It is Friday. Get ready for this weekend. Getting ready for a lot of shifts to happen. And today definitely kicks it off with a nice bang. So let's go ahead and hop into these transits for today and see what we have going on. If I look a little bit bigger right now, it's because I am. I made this part a little bit bigger. I didn't know I could do that. I, apparently I can't, so I was just having a little bit of fun with it <laughs> in any event. So the full moon happened at six degrees exactly, six zero zero. So that's going to be a very pure degree. This happened at 5.57 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am making this, and it's 7.54 at the current moment. So the full moon has already passed. But we still are in this full moon phase, so you will definitely be feeling these energies all day. Now, full moon in Aries. You know, Aries, Aries is Aries is simple, right? I'm not saying that Aries people are just simple, but Aries as an energy is pretty simple, right? A lot of people like to associate it with the with like the ego. It's the it's the it's the ascendant, right? It's the first house. It's the way that people perceive you. It is uh, your human self. You have like your ascendant, which is the human self. You have the sun, which is your spirit. Then you have the moon, which is your soul. So it's like your human self. Full moon in Aries. Here at six degrees. Sixth course in numerology is ruled by Venus. And this is about whether or not we can actually receive who we are in this moment in time right now if we can receive it that doesn't mean that you can't improve upon yourself and where you are right now that doesn't mean that you can't strive for anything right now but this full moon especially with a chiron and a north node here in aries especially with those energies right and, of course, with a Mars that is dispositing this full moon, dispositing this North Node in Chiron, this is whether or not you can accept yourself right now as you are, who you are, in this moment. If you can't, if you can't accept yourself for all of who you are right now, all of your quirks, all of your weirdness, all of it, and also not put those things on a pedestal for people to see, then you'll be good. You'll be all right. This isn't necessarily about also who you are. This is also about what you do, right? The actions that you take, how you create what are you making in this world? What are you doing in this world? What are you creating in this world, right? The danger of a full moon like this, of course, as the moon continues, by the end of the day, it gets really, really close to Chiron. If you're on the West Coast, then it'll actually will conjunct Chiron during your late night going into Saturday. If, it's, if you're on the East Coast, it's going to be happening after midnight when the moon conjuncts Chiron. There is definitely going to be this element where people display their traumas and their wounds for everyone to see, for everyone to see, because they are overly identifying with that wound and that trauma. It is blasted out. It is on the front page. It is the book cover. And they feel like, because through that, they're going to gain some type of clout, some type of notoriety. But there's a danger to doing that sort of thing. It's one thing to take a hard experience or a trauma or a complication or a challenge that we had in the past. It's one thing to take that 
and to use that as a means to inspire yourself, to motivate yourself, and by extension, other people more than likely. It's one thing to do that. It's another thing to put it out there in a way that makes you seem and feel and express victimhood mentality. That's the other part about this. You don't want to be a victim. You are not a victim. Okay. But you're going to see a lot of this, right? Especially with a sun and Mars and the South Node in Libra opposing all of this energy, right? Especially with a Mars that's getting closer and closer to the South Node in Libra. This is like bargaining, right? Especially as it gets close to South Node, this is like bargaining. This is outsourcing one's true self just to appease the collective, just to appease someone else. This is making weird diplomatic moves that you think are going to, uh, that are on the surface, are going to seemingly benefit everyone in the collective when really it only benefits yourself. It's rather selfish. It's rather arrogant, right? But you put on this nice little face. You dress it up. You know what I'm saying? You make it smell good. It's like putting lipstick on a pig, though. Because if your actions are that of something that is deplorable, detestable, but then you try and put makeup on that bitch, and lipstick, and make it smell good, and dress it up and shit, it's still a deplorable action. It's still detestable. Just because you can fool some people doesn't mean that you're going to fool everybody. And that's the thing about this. This is full moons in Aries, especially with the energy that we have going on here. The Mars, oh, South Node, Chiron here. This is like premium gaslighting energy as far as like the ability to gaslight is going to be at a higher propensity. Therefore, it'll be easier to kind of manipulate, you know, large swaths of people to accept whatever narrative you put out there. This is really, honestly, I think a lot of it's going to be like certain actions that people have taken. This is going to be people trying to manipulate the narrative of those actions to try and be like, oh, we didn't realize that we had clapped for a racist and we cheered a racist. Now we're going to come back and apologize about that. You know, we didn't realize that we had did that. Really, Trudeau? Like, <laughs> oh, wait, no, nah, we didn't realize that the person that was working for us was an absolute piece of shit. No, nah, we didn't realize that. He's been, they've been working for us for five years, but we had no idea they're an absolute piece of shit. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and fire them now to save face. Boom, with this full moon in the area, especially at six degrees, this is like bad PR, like really bad PR. And if you're awake and you're, you know, if you're present in the moment and if you are aware, then you'll be able to see right through this. But a lot of people want to see right through this. The other part about this, too, with a full moon like this is that those of you, especially on the spiritual path, this is an energy that's ripe for agents coming in to try and knock you off your game, right? This is the kind of transit where the matrix will send agents to try and influence your decisions, influence your emotions, and try and get you to accept a different narrative, a different ideal that's going to be, to, that will delineate you from your spiritual path, from the straight and narrow. You don't want to do that. It's going to give you, it might present something a little bit shinier. It might present something uh, that's a little bit better. It might be like, oh, the grass is green over here. Wouldn't you rather be doing this shit? Because we have to remember that during this full moon, we do have a Venus that's square Uranus. Now, Uranus is turned off, right? Taurus, right? Lights are off, okay? Venus, 
still traveling with Juno here, but they are at 22 degrees. This is, and like I said, 2 plus 2 is 4, which is Uranus energy. So this is a very shaky square, especially being that it's the third time that they square. And they'll be squaring all day. They started their square yesterday. They're going to be squaring all day. Venus is trying to pick up speed, right? This is the kind of transit where they'll make you feel like Mercury is out of shadow and Venus is out of shadow, when really they aren't. They'll be like, oh, you can. You, we have this great plan that we're going to put out. We have an awesome game plan and stuff, and this is how we're going to do it and stuff like that. And everything's going to be organized. Everything's going to have its place, right? And that's how it's going to look. And every, everything's going to be beautiful. We're going to be able to create more because of this. It's going to be very shiny and stuff. And we'll be able to connect with other people, and everyone will be on the same page. Do not believe the hype. <laughs> Do not believe the hype, especially when we have a looming shutdown here in America. That thought very well. Um, like government shutdown, anyways. Do not believe the hype. The full moon energy is rather simple. Who are you? What actions do you take? Can you accept yourself in this moment, who you are, and the actions that you have taken? That doesn't mean that you have to like every action you've taken, but you can still accept what you have done to this point. And also about, do you have the strength and the power to put yourself, put all of yourself into what it is that you're doing? All of yourself into what, what it is that you're doing. Aries, it's like a, it's that spark, it's that, initiation right boom right it's the ram it's bam let's go let's do this but how do you take that and sustain it is another thing that's why i said with the meditation watch your habits they become your character watch your habits they become your character and they say it takes a what Six, like 30 to 60 days to establish like a new habit. I think everyone's different. You know, I think it probably depends upon what your chart is, what it looks like. Probably has to do a lot with probably honestly any of your earth energy as far as like habits go. Um, and probably Aries as well. Um, or like wherever your Mars is, as far as like whether or not you can sustain those actions too. So I think everyone's different. I think some people can establish a habit within a week. Some people could be two weeks, a month, three months. Some people may take them a whole year to establish like a solid habit. So I think it really just depends upon the person. But when we watch our habits, like I said, they do become our character. So pay attention to your habits today, you know, especially the main ones. And if you're seeking to have some type of change, if you're seeking to do something different, then this is about, this is a full moon that you know, you want to get rather intentional about too, you know? And like I said, it's something that you can just kind of keep simple, right? For example, I am starting to do a sun gazing meditation in the morning and a breathing exercise combined together, right? And I've been doing that for, I guess, a little less than a, what, about a week, maybe? About a week, maybe a little less than a week or so. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I missed like one day, right? I missed one day. And what was interesting about it too, is that like, I didn't want to meditate this morning before coming on here. I didn't want to, but I did. And I gained some nice insight from it too. Um, yeah, I gained some nice insight from it and it ended up being very positive, rather powerful. And now I'm here. So it's like, that's the thing about it. No one said that establishing these better, greater, higher habits was going to be easy, especially when we we're so conditioned into just kind of degenerating away, not having the good habits, whatever like that. Like I said, this is about like if there's something that you really want to do or strive for, let's just say that you want to write a book because I'm, I'm a writer, so that's what I'm going to use, right? You want to write a book, right? Well, write. 
like every day. It's that simple. Oh, well, I don't have time to write. Literally set a timer. Set like you know that you get you know that you get home every day around six thirty seven o'clock. You know that you have these things to do. Maybe you got to put maybe, you know, you know, you have dinner with your family, whatever like that, you know, and then you put the kids down to sleep and everything like that. And then you usually have like an hour, maybe an hour and a half that you normally just watch TV and stuff like that with your wife or your husband. And then you go to bed, right? You probably have like this routine. Well, find a time within that. Just carve out a simple 15 minutes or so, cut into your TV time and do some writing, right? This is going to be a full moon that is going to bring up the question is like, okay, if I really want to create this thing, I want to establish like this new habit, right? And I really want to, because I want to become this thing, I want to be this thing, right? The only way to be it is to do it, right? There's going to be a level of sacrifice here where there's going to be something that you're going to have to sacrifice in order to get where you really want to go to. But the only way that you're going to do that is to accept and embrace where you are right now. Because if you can't accept and embrace where you are right now, and you're constantly constantly worried about the past or constantly worried about the future, then you're never really going to get anywhere. You're just going to be stuck in a purgatorial kind of state, right? So, so with this full moon, six degrees earlier in the day, and we're going to be feeling this energy throughout the day, right? Um the Venus in Leo making a nice little square over to Uranus and Taurus. 22 degrees. Are you going to get caught up on other people's ideal of what shiny is and what beautiful is? Or are you going to accept and embrace what is shiny and beautiful to you and your heart and what you can create and what you can bring forth and how you receive the beauty of the universe, how you receive the light of the sun, how you receive the creativity, and then co-create, how you receive that imagination and actually be able to put it out into the world. And then you connect with the people that resonate with that thing. Especially when it comes to relationships too, especially when it comes to relationships with this energy. You got a Venus that is dispositing this, this sun, right? And Mars. You got to think about that too. Not only that, but it's a Venusian degree with six degrees. So this full moon will, can potentially bring explosive arguments that are probably very petty in nature in relationships. It doesn't have to be romantic, but a lot of them are going to be romantic, right? So just be wary about that. And also take into consideration that they are human just like you. They are human just like you. Try not to take things super personal. People are going to do that with this form. People are going to take things super personal, and then they're going to throw their Chiron in your face. And like the negative aspect of Chiron, where it's just showing you, look at this festering wound with maggots in it. I keep talking about that. That thing keeps coming up, but that's kind of what I, that's the image I get in my head. It's like this open, festering, blistering wound that has maggots in it. And waving that around as if it's currency. Or you realize what that, how you can take that and how that can be a teacher instead. But are you teachable? That's the other part about this. Some people know it all, some people have all the answers. They don't need to be taught anything new, they don't need to learn anything new. Because they already got it figured out. Anybody that has it all figured out right now? Anybody that just knows everything right now? You want to stay away from those individuals. Because they're in for a rude awakening. Especially with these eclipses that are coming up. Just saying.
Just saying. So just be wary of that today with when it comes to relationships. Be wary of, you know, you're not always going to see eye to eye. You're not always going to be on the same wavelength. And that doesn't mean that the relationship is done. It doesn't mean that's bad. It doesn't mean that's it doesn't mean that, oh my gosh, this isn't my twin flame. This isn't my soulmate because we don't see eye to eye on every single fucking thing all the fucking time. Don't get caught up in that. Unless there are super major red flags and you did make it through a Venus retrograde. Unless you got with them during the Venus retrograde, which, uh, I mean, you do you, boo. I just don't think that's necessarily the best time to get in a relationship with someone. But don't take something that is very, very small and blow it all the way up, especially with a full moon in Aries, because it's literally just a spark. It's just a, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to actually become the fire. It's like, take, it's like, Having like a, you know, a lighter, you know, and trying to, you know, you're trying to light something and it's just like, you know, and taking that little and blowing it all the way up. It was like, nah, dude, it was like a, it's like, bam, quick. Arguments going to happen. Disagreements are going to happen. That doesn't mean that they're not your twin flame or your soulmate. This is the kind of full moon where people freak out and they try and find They're like, oh, my gosh, I am so convinced that this person is my twin flame. I know it. They know it. I've never talked to them, but we're psychically connected. Are you? Sorry to burst your bubble. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble. Are you sure you want to meet your twin flame? I need to make like a whole video on that. Are you sure you want to meet your twin flame? I don't normally draw a card in the middle, but I'm going to draw a card. I actually have two cards that I'm drawing. Knight of Pentacles. Yeah. I'm about to show my Yeah. I'm about to show my ignorance right now. We have the Knight of Pentacles and we have the Hierophant. Those two just came up. But the Knight of Pentacles is in reverse are you going to go are you going to take orders from an authority figure to play your song a certain way and go by the beat of what they want you to go by that's the dangerous part of this is taking advice from someone and taking being consoled by someone that has like this higher knowledge or wisdom that you think, but it's a knight of pentacles. The message that they're giving you is marching orders. That's going to have you going in down a road. Are you going to take marching orders that has you become a warrior, an agent of the matrix? Be wary of these people that are coming into your life. They are not actually going and living by the beat of their own drum. They are living by the beat of someone else's drum, someone else's ideals, what someone else wants. They are going against their nature. They are not walking the spiritual path. But they are watching well, everything. And I believe everything is spiritual, but it's off of what their truth is. They have delineated. Be careful of these people today. And the thing is that these are the people, these are the people that are going to come and show up. They're going to come and show up. You're not going to really see the higher fent, the person that's orchestrating everything, the puppet master, if you will. You're not going to see that. And because you can't see the puppet master, you don't even know that this is reverse. You think it's upright. They, whatever they say, it might sound good. Be wary of that. Just saying. This is why you need to embrace and accept 
who you are and where you are right now. Because if you don't, then you will be easily influenced. That's the thing about this, right? Now, I'm going to just do a quick rundown of the signs, too. So, Aries, this full moon is happening in your first house. So, this has everything to do with yourself, your persona. You do have Chiron and the North Node in your sign, too. Aries, you are getting ready to really explode onto the scene in a very powerful way. You, especially with this North Node and Chiron in your sign, like I said, this full moon, too, is really wanting you to break through any of the traumas and things that are holding you back, but also taking that superpower and really just making yourself undeniable. Okay. Now the danger part of course here is that whether or not you can actually open up and receive the gifts in your heart, right. And whether or not, you know, asking yourself, you know, the people that you hang out with, and those values and stuff like that, do they actually match where you're trying to go? So Aries, if there's something that you want to do or be, go to those people and, you know, because that's what your heart is telling you, right? So you need to connect with people that remind you of who you are and what you are trying to be and what you want to be, right? So stop hanging out with morons and idiots, right? I'm just being a, I'm just being a little blunt, but stop hanging out with people that are going to drag you down and have you focus on the negative aspects of the Chiron, which is like, oh yes, oh yes, you are so brave, you know, you are so this, whatever, you know, and want to keep you as a victim, right? Yeah. Don't hang out with people that give energy to how you've been a victim in life. Go to people that give energy to how you can be that warrior in your life, how you can move through things, how you can overcome things. Your Aries, you're, you're leaders, right? You're leaders, but you can only lead. You can only really lead when you trust your own heart and not listen to everyone else's ideals of who you are. Taurus, this full moon is happening in your 12th house. So this is gonna take on a very spiritual nature. Um, you know, Taurus, of course, you can be pretty stubborn. You know, Mal, you do have Uranus in your sign and it is squaring um, Venus, which is in your fourth house, right? So there's definitely this element where you're definitely looking, you know, your home life is very important to you, Taurus, um, you know, being comfortable in your own home, being comfortable in your own skin, I would even say, right? So um, this full moon, though, in your 12th house is really going to be bringing up, you know, it's going to be bringing up these spiritual matters. Um, Taurus says you probably don't necessarily want to be getting to and like too much into like drugs and word escapisms this full moon may want may have you want to escape to try and be some past version of yourself because it feels more comfortable because uranus is in your sign kind of shaking things up um it's you know there's this very unique interesting almost alien quality that's wanting to come out and be expressed right now but there could be a fear of how it's going to be received by others. And then you wonder if you're going to have like, if you're going to be accepted by your family and I'm getting the feeling Taurus, this isn't, this could be like your actual blood family, but I think a lot of this has to do with just the people that you connect with your friends, your associates, the full moon in your 12th house is definitely going to be bringing up a lot of different spiritual matters. And it's going to be a lot of hidden stuff too. So things could be coming out of left field for you Taurus today. Um, just be aware of that. But this is really about, you know, reestablishing and realizing that the truth of who you are is like, yeah, we are all human and stuff like that. We have a human self, spirit, soul. But the thing that comes down to it is that, like, we are utilizing this vessel right now. But you are ultimately an infinite spark of the divine. This full moon is having you realize that today, Taurus. So all of the things that you kind of get stuck in, all of the things that 
that you are this way, like you are this way, that's the thing about it. The I am, the Aries aspect of you is, a, is your 12th house, which is natural by Pisces, which is mutable water. So that's the thing about it. Tauruses can be very, very powerful, but if they get too stuck in who they are and being a certain way, then it actually knocks them off their spiritual path because what is meant to be, it's meant to flow. Who you are is actually meant to flow a little bit more in many ways. So Gemini, this full moon is happening in your 11th house. So Gemini's, um, you, there's, there's going to be a release today in many ways. Um, especially when it comes down to like your friends and your uh, your social circle, this full moon is definitely Gemini's. That's the weird thing about Gemini's. Uh, I would feel like you will probably get be one of the signs that gets gaslighted the most on this day, just because this is happening in your eleventh house. But this is asking you like whether or not you know you are that spiritual server to humanity, right? Um, you know, this Uranus is in your 12th house and it is making the square to Venus in your third. So this is definitely a time, especially as soon as Venus comes out of shadow, Gemini, you're going to be feeling a lot better. You know, you're going to feel like you can actually like communicate what's in your heart because lately it's been it's been off. You've been trying to communicate what's in your heart. You've been trying to communicate your love. You've been trying to be creative. When Venus comes out of shadow, finally, you're going to really start to feel a lot more creative again. And this full moon, like I said, being in your 11th house, this is going to release from your life those connections that don't really work, but also bring into your life those connections that, you know, will hopefully get you to that next stage. Now, the dangerous part, too, is that, like, you have to ask yourself, are you connected and part of a group uh, that is more of like that victim mentality and stuff like that. And are you parroting that? You know, Gemini, you can you can kind of take something and you can kind of parrot it, right? You know, you will reflect things back. So you have to ask yourself, the groups of people that you are involved in, you is this really something that aligns with you spiritually? Or are you just kind of parroting something so you can kind of be a part of a group or stuff like that? Because Gemini's, they love to talk. They love to communicate. They love to be a part of groups. They love to be out there in the world and they're curious and stuff like that. Bring This is going to be a full moon that wants to actually kind of bring your curiosity back. So if, you know, if you see that, okay, well, maybe let me try it this way. And yeah, it may ostracize me from the group that I've been a part of, but let me try this way and see what happens, you know? So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to actually be an individual within that group. And more than likely, you probably already think a little bit differently from the people in that particular group. And maybe you're afraid that they're going to ostracize you. Let them. Because you are meant to go somewhere else and be somewhere else and be someone else. You know, not only that, but, you know, you may find that maybe you aren't necessarily completely in line with, you know, the group think or whatever group that you are a part of. And that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. You know, it, this will be a full moon where it can be expressed. And then depending upon how they respond and react, kind of lets you know whether or not you want to stay with that group or whether it's time to move on. Cancer, this full moon is happening in your 10th house. Uh, Cancer, y'all been under attack for a while. Uh, same with Capricorn, yeah? Y'all y'all have had it rough these past several years. I'm not going to lie. Now, this full moon in your in your 10th, uh, definitely, of course, is going to bring up aspects of career. But I really want to hone in that this is more so your legacy. And your legacy, Cancer, is who you are. Your legacy is who you are, especially with the North Node and Chiron here as well. This is about whether or not you actually value what's in your heart, whether or not you actually value that, and whether or not you actually can receive that, right? The square course to Uranus and Taurus and your 11th, is whether or not you're going to just try and be that people pleaser that you always do and try and heal everyone. 
but you are afraid to really express who you are and let that be your legacy. Let that be your legacy. Cancer it is time for you to stop making your legacy off of your victimhood. It is time for you to become the actual teacher. It's time for you to simply be you and let that be your legacy. Honestly, Cancer, it's kind of simple for you. Leo, this full moon is happening in your ninth house. You are releasing a belief about who you are so you can actually connect to who you truly are. I know it's been a weird, I know it's been a little bit weird for the Leos, right? Your birthday season didn't really feel like a birthday season. Not really. Not until the sun got there. And it just, it felt, actually it was like, not, it wasn't until the, uh, wasn't until the new moon in Leo, which the new moon in Leo happened at the latter degrees. So you had like, what, maybe a week of what, of the Leo season, but Venus was also like slowing down in retrograde too. So it's been a little weird for the Leos. I'm not gonna lie. It's been a little bit weird. It's a little bit better now. You know, Venus is moving forward, but it's still in shadow in your first house. And it is, of course, squaring Uranus in your 10th house. But we have, of course, like I said, the full moon in your ninth. This is whether or not you really believe in the quality of the creative process that you bring forward to the world, to the collective and your legacy. And you know, what you are here to actually do, right? Um, so the moon in your ninth house, Jupiter rules the natural ninth house, and it's here, of course, traveling with Uranus. This is definitely like, I know, Leo, you really, you, you really are meant to lead. You really are meant to be this, these, the kings and the queens, stuff like that. You are the main character in many ways, right? But this is about whether or not you're going to be the main character that you know you should be, or you're going to be the main character that everyone expects you to be. They expect you to be this way. They expect you to act in this way. And are you going to shape your beliefs based off of that? You know, I remember the sun and this Mars and the South Node is in your third house. So it's, you know, bringing up these elements of like you're trying to communicate these different things and trying to you're trying to show the balance. You're trying to show the harmony. You're trying to be transparent about what you're doing, stuff like that. But not everyone, even when you explain yourself to these people, they're not always going to get it. And they're still going to try and throw shit at you. Leo, don't explain yourself. When you explain yourself, you lose. When Leos explain themselves and overly explain themselves and try to be overly diplomatic, that's when they lose. Your job is to merely be you and shine your light. That's literally it. And whether or not you can believe you can actually do that. Virgo, this full moon is happening in your eighth house. With a Venus in your 12th, squaring a Uranus in your ninth, right? Virgo, relationships have been a source of um, beauty, uh, fantasy, but also a source of frustration and also uh, potentially feeling like this need to escape from things. Um, with that Venus in your 12th house. Now this full moon that's happening in your eighth house this is definitely going to bring up your commitments. It's going to bring up these deeper values, if you will. It's going to bring up, it's not just, you know, if the seventh house and Libra and stuff like that, that's like, you know, the actual wedding. The eighth house is like the life after the wedding is the commitment aspect to it. So this, this full moon in Aries is really asking you whether or not you can fully commit to being who you really are and expressing that regardless of how other people perceive it as, right? 
whether or not you're going to fully commit to that. Now, Uranus in your ninth, oh, so, yeah, Uranus in your ninth, swearing at Venus in your twelfth, it's definitely going to bring up elements what, of like, well, shit, you know, are you going to pay a lot of attention to the beliefs of other people and what they have to say? And was like, oh, why do you value that thing? You know, or are you going to pay attention to what's really in your heart and bring that forward and express it? It's spiritual in nature. The Virgos, that's the thing about it. With having like a Leo, like 12th house, this kind of does in many ways, Virgos, make you kind of stars in the spirit realm. It's kind of interesting, you know, even though Virgo rules like reality, the fact that you have a Leo 12th house, it does kind of make you stars in the spirit realm. Whereas, but here, it may not necessarily seem that way, right? It's a lot more subtle here. So this is like, this is why you have to like, you can't really necessarily listen to the opinions of so many other people because they don't realize that you are in many ways like the star in the spirit realm in, in a sense, right? It's full moon in your eighth house definitely going to bring up like these deeper matters, uh, deeper relationship aspects too. Remember, the moon doesn't like to be in the eighth house, so it could present some challenges for Virgos. Um, but this is whether or not you can uh, receive that deeper quality and that deeper connection and really bring that aspect of yourself out, if you will. So. Mercury is in your sign and it's still in shadow, but it will come out of shadow tomorrow. So Virgo, you're probably feeling a little bit confused because like, how can I commit to something when I don't have all the answers? Because you want to have all the answers. You want to have everything laid out before you actually jump. This is going to be an exercise in trust. So another thing about Scorpio. Uh, Scorpio can have trust issues, but Scorpio actually rules trust as well. Trust funds. So do you trust yourself to make things happen and to make things work, even if you don't have all the answers? That's the big question. Libra, this full moon is happening in your seventh house. Your seventh house, Libra. Now, Venus in your 11th is squaring, you know, Taurus in your 8th. And <laughs> uh, squaring you know, Uranus and Taurus in your 8th. So there is certainly an element with the Libras, you know, especially with Mars in the south of your sign. Libra, you're going to kind of go at this a little bit differently than Scorpio. When Scorpio had the south node in this sign, we just brooded the whole time. We were very moody. We just brooded the whole time. With you guys, you guys are just going to be going into hashtag petty games. But you have to ask yourself, like, just because the petty games are entertaining and maybe exciting and a little bit dramatic, do you really want to get involved in hashtag petty games? This full moon in your seventh is definitely going to bring up some relationship aspects, but it's really going to more so bring up a lot of the aspects of, like, maybe how your relationships have hurt you and stuff like that in the past. But this North Node in Aries – it's like you are destined right now to establish a greater relationship with yourself. But also to not get so caught up on the negative aspect of Chiron and see people that is like, okay, they're human. That's the big challenge for Libras right now. It's that they want to be super petty and kind of dramatic, you know, and go on their revenge tour. Don't blame y'all to go on your revenge tour. But you still got to realize that these people are human. And you are too. So don't get super caught up in just trying to hand out these revenge tours tickets. So here, come to my revenge tour. Uh, come to this. Come to this. Be like, yeah. Because Libras, you're kind of like, you're kind of in this mode right now where you're like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Like, that's how Libras feel like right now. And... You know what? I don't blame you. But honestly, Libra, it's better to just let bygones be bygones and walk away. It's better to just let bygones be bygones and walk away. Because we have a, the drama's going to come. Trust me. We have eclipses coming. This is not the day, Libra, 
to create unnecessary drama in relationships. It's not the day to do that. It's not the day to do that. It's about establishing a better relationship with yourself, right? Being able to see the humanness in other people. That's the cool thing about Libra is that you guys actually have the ability to do that, but sometimes you get caught up on the exterior. Sometimes you'll get caught up on the makeup. Sometimes you'll get caught up on the look, Aries, right? You'll get caught up on the mask and you'll associate that mask and that makeup with who they actually are when really there's a deeper aspect to it. So don't get caught up on the exterior. Libra, you may want to go on your revenge tour and be hashtag petty games, but similar to Gemini, this is you will be one of the signs that may get gaslighted the most during this. And you have to have the strength of character to not react and respond in a volatile way and react and respond in a way where you do the scorpion thing. And because they sting you, you sting them back. Don't sting them back today. There's no need to do that because it's just going to create a perpetual loop of stinging and you're not going to actually get anywhere. Scorpio. Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your sixth house. Full moon happening in your sixth house. Venus, of course, is in your 10th, squaring Uranus and Taurus in your seventh. Right? Scorpio, this full moon in your sixth with Aries. This has to do with your day to day reality, your habits. Scorpio, you're actually releasing habits that have actually kept you from living a more spiritual life. Um, Scorpio, I know that you probably are feeling a lot better with the South Node out of your sign, and you haven't really had like a lot of things going on. But Jupiter, you Jupiter and Uranus are still in opposition to you, so there's still has been, of course, some challenges, right? And Venus has been squaring energy, but there's been nothing in Scorpio, right? Now your only planet, Cap uh, Pluto is in Capricorn in your third, right? So I feel like Scorpios right now are kind of in this period where they they kind of do want to get back at the world. It's kind of a revenge tour as well, like Libra, but Libra is just being petty with it instead. And they're being a little bit more, they're acting a little bit more on it, whereas Scorpios are kind of trying to devise some sort of weird ass plan but that, that's the thing about this. You know, you really, Scorpio, with a Venus that's in your 10th in your tenth house, it's about to come out of retrograde. Your career life has been kind of weird anyways, and the legacy that you want to leave behind. That whole thing's been weird anyways. And then trying to connect with other people, um, especially groups of people, you're trying to find your way, Scorpio. You really are. Um, this full moon in your sixth house is going to be like, well, look at your habits. Your daily habits is going to really establish your character and who you are, right? Like you don't really want to get caught up on habits that get you stuck in the negative aspect of the Chiron, right? You want to look at the teacher aspect of this, right? So I think this full moon for Scorpios, this is a time where it's time to re release some bad habits. You know what I mean? But also, you know, consider how is, how it is that you serve humanity. That's the thing that y'all don't freaking realize about Scorpio. Everyone's like, mm, Scorpio. Mm. It's like this, their sixth house of service is Aries. So they are here to service humanity. They are here to purge a lot of the dark emotions and transform the dark emotions of humanity. Scorpios are literally walking transformers. A Scorpio, You can be in a bad mood. A Scorpio will walk past you and you'll suddenly feel a little bit better because they will just magnetically attract that energy and transmute it. But Scorpio, you have to ask yourself, where, what kind of environment are you putting yourself in? Because you're going to naturally transform, but are you putting yourself in an environment of people that have such deep, dark shit and you're naturally going to transform that because you do it automatically? That still does take a toll on Scorpio. Just because they do it naturally, just because it comes easy for them, doesn't mean that that shit doesn't build up. So this is about releasing a lot of that pent-up energy 
all that all that pent up energy of all the people that you have transformed in your life or over like this year, if you will. It's about re- over the last six months, if you will, from like the new moon in Aries. It's about releasing all of that shit. It's about releasing all of that. And also being like, well, shoot, that was a bit rough. Well, what if I put myself in an environment where people aren't just suppressing who they are? They aren't suppressing their spiritual self. They aren't, they actually, why don't I put myself in a place where people embrace who they are? They know they worth, they know their value, right? What about I connect with those people instead? And I'm still gonna be that transformer, that alchemist, that energetic alchemist, if you will, but at the very least, it won't feel so damn heavy all the time. Sagittarius, this full moon is happening in your fifth house. It's happening in your fifth house. Oh, Sagittarius, this is about releasing aspects with the, your creativity and your heart. You haven't been feeling as creative lately, right? But you have a North Node in Chiron and Aries. So especially since you are, you know, the centaurs, and Chiron was a centaur, right, that got wounded and was immortal and became mortal. This full moon is, for you, Sagittarius, realizing that just because I think it's a full moon where you realize that you are mortal. It's a full moon where you realize that, oh, shit, I am mortal. Damn, I took that arrow to the knee, and I am mortal. Well, use this energy to inspire you, right, to create something and do something with this, right? This Venus, right, for you, it's in your ninth house, right? It's in your ninth house, and it is squaring, you know, that Uranus in your sixth house, right? So... This is really about whether or not you even believe you can be that star, whether or not you can, whether or not you believe you can shine bright, whether or not you believe that you can be that beacon, right? But with this being in your fifth house, you have to release this idea of who you are. You have to release this idea of who you are and release this whole thing is like, this whole narrative where all you are stuck on is the fact that you got shot in the knee or you got shot in the thigh or that you're maybe you feel like your power comes from like your power comes from like your hair or your power comes from this. I'm not gonna lie, Sagittarius with the full moon, like watch it. Look at the Sagittarius. Sagittarius are probably about to dye their hair. They're probably about to cut their hair. You know what I'm saying? This is a time. Like, <laughs> that's what, I mean, this, and honestly, it'd probably be a very good time for Sagittarius just to do that anyways, to kind of change something up about their physical appearance too. Because you may be so stuck on it looking a certain way. It's like, no, I have to wear this color. I have to keep my hair at this length. I have to do this. This is a time, Sagittarius, where it's like, be a little bit more creative, you know? Be the artist again, you know? Yeah, that's what I got for Sag. Capricorn, this full moon is happening in your fourth house. Your fourth house. With Chiron, of course. Uh, Chiron and the North Node there. You have, of course, this Venus here, which is in your eighth house. And you have Uranus here, of course, which is in your fifth house. With the full moon in your fourth. So... Capricorn, eh, like I said, with cancer, it's been a little bit rough for you. you know, I've been going through. Like I'm not gonna lie. Like just looking at my brother is a Capricorn, my sister is a Cancer, and I look at them. I'm like, yo, like how? <laughs> but Capricorn, you are a lot stronger than you give yourself credit for. Now this full moon is happening in your fourth. Is whether or not you can be comfortable in who you are. Capricorn, your home is literally you, like your body. You know what I'm saying? So, like, 
whether or not you can actually be comfortable in your own skin and who you actually are. Can you find comfort in that? This full moon is releasing any ideas of, you know, that you can't be comfortable in your own skin, that you can't be comfortable in your own body. Uh, also, with this full moon in Aries, it is time for you to take off certain masks and time for you to actually have certain conversations that need to be had. They may be messy, they, but they are a long time coming and they need to happen sooner rather than later. They need to happen sooner rather than later. And you are going to have to deal with the um, repercussions from holding on to these things for so long. But I think it's because Capricorn, you've been trying to really figure out, you know, and trying to come up with a game plan as far as like how you're going to really move this thing forward. You know, Mercury has been retrograde in Virgo in your ninth house, right? And it's going to come out of shadow. So you're finally going to get some sort of epiphany this weekend. But it doesn't happen on this full moon. This is this full moon is simply about you taking off the mask. Taking off the mask so people can see who you really are and what you truly represent. And that can be scary for Capricorn, right? Because I think Capricorn, you don't want to show weakness. You don't want to show vulnerability. But this full moon is going to have you release any inhibitions that you have towards being vulnerable. So Capricorn, be a little more vulnerable right now. You know, and this is about being honest about your humanness. I know it's going to be a little bit hard for you, Capricorn, but it's about being honest about that. And if the, the people that really accept you and embrace you for who you are will make you a part of your daily reality. They will make you, <clears throat> they will make themselves a part of it. They will be there if they're meant to be there. I think you're afraid to take off the mask because you're afraid that these people may leave your life. If they leave your life, call their bluff. And if they walk out of your life, let them walk out of your life. But if they accept and embrace you for who you are, then you'll realize that your home was always with them. You may be thinking, I think you holding on to this mask, you're holding on to it because you felt like if you take off the mask that these people are going to leave your life. But really, that's just living a false life. And it's just living a false self. So you are releasing in many ways this false self so you can actually feel more comfortable in who you are. Aquarius, this full moon is happening in your third house. It's happening in your third house with a Uranus in your fourth squaring Venus in your seventh house. Aquarius, with the full moon that's in your 11th, you rule the natural 11th house. This is definitely, you know, you are releasing yourself from certain groups of people. Um, you're releasing, I mean, a full moon's our time of release, blah, 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 blah. But this is about whether, this is about releasing people that no longer, that your, your values just don't match. They just don't align. You're honestly, this full moon for you is, is actually pretty freaking simple. I'm not going to lie. You have to look at the relationships in your life and who you're connecting with, right? And then you have to look at it's like, you know what? Okay, yeah, Uranus is here in the fourth house. You're look, you looking for a home, right? You're looking for a home right now, and it's a little bit hard for you to look for a home because um, you feel a little bit ostracized, and you're already an alien, and you already have these higher ideals and this higher knowledge and wisdom that you're trying to bring into this earth and stuff. But you need to stop connecting and associating with people that aren't going to get it. Right. You need to stop connecting those people that aren't going to get it. Right. There are people out there that will get it. And there will be more people that will continue to get it as Pluto goes into Aquarius and things start to be revealed more. Aquarius, you're going to start to feel a lot better as far as that stuff goes. You're going to start to feel a lot better about your place on this planet and this on this earth because you're so weird. You're so out there. You're so alien. But really, what you're trying to connect people back to is the spiritual home. It's like where you come from, where you emanate from. You're able to like, no, like this is this this earth is our temporary home, this terrestrial, but I'm trying to get you back to your spiritual birthright. Right. So, you know, 
yeah, you may Aquarius is you're feeling like you know you kind of being released from certain groups of people, um, and this is about you know having those conversations about that. Maybe you are afraid to really communicate who you really are because you are afraid that um, there could be a like I said, this fear because under the sun and everything is in, in your ninth house. It's like you don't want to talk to people and communicate with people uh on the level of their beliefs especially if you don't believe what they believe in aquarius is honestly some of y'all might get ghosted by aquarius for this full moon like straight up ghosted this is like prime ghosting energy for aquarius right <laughs> so just you know just be on the lookout for that. If you're not an Aquarius, not if you're an Aquarius and you're thinking about ghosting someone, just ask yourself, especially, like I said, with a Venus that's in opposition to you, especially when it comes to relationships, just ask yourself, it's like, look, just because we may not be on the same wave, wavelength right now, and maybe we don't see eye to eye on every single little thing, do I really need to blow this thing up and just ghost this person? Or do I need to just, you know, Try and see the humanity in the situation. And it's like, yeah, maybe they don't necessarily get it where you're coming from. This is about trying to communicate it differently, right? Yeah, I think you've been trying to communicate it a certain way for a long time, trying to bring these higher aspects of the spiritual wisdom that you carry. And you're trying to communicate that to people and people just don't really get it. Aquarius is y'all really do think differently. I'm, I'm, I'm married to an Aquarius, so y'all really do think differently. It's very, very fascinating. Um, but yeah, Grace, just, you know, don't, don't, if you feel like you need to ghost people and you've kind of ran things through, but you've got to remember too, this, this, uh, this Mercury is in your eighth house too. So I would say, honestly, Aquarius, wait until Mercury comes out of shadow, wait until Mercury comes out of shadow. And honestly, you probably want to wait until Venus comes out of shadow too, which would be like, Venus comes out of shadow like like October like 9th or 10th or something like that. So you may want to jump the gun with this full moon in Aquarius, oh, this full moon in Aries, Aquarius, to just ghost people. But I would at least wait until Mercury comes out of shadow, which will be Saturday, which will be tomorrow. So just, you know, be a calm, collected, cool observer today. So. And Pisces, this full moon is happening in your second house. The value of self-worth. Pisces, do you actually value who you are? Do you actually value who you are, right? <laughs> so that's the thing about this. You know, we have, uh, of course, Uranus is here in your third house, making a square over to Leo, your sixth house. And Venus, you know, she's moving a little bit faster. Um You've been trying to figure out your daily reality in many ways. I'm trying to figure out your habits and stuff. So Venus retrograde in your sixth house, and, you know, and Venus is exalted in your sign, mind you, too. So, um, yeah, that element, too. Pisces, this is, I feel like Pisces right now, especially when it comes to, like, relationships, too, um, it's been a little, bit, a little bit harder on the Pisces because that Venus is retrograding your sixth house, um, the planet of relationships. And then, you know, Libra itself, you know, you have Mars at the sun here, of course. Um, so it's, you know, it's been a little bit weird and it's in your eighth house too. So it, it's, it's been a little bit weird for the Pisces because they're trying to, you know, the, and these eclipses are going to be happening in your eighth house as well. So it's definitely going to be pretty deep for the Pisces. And there's going to be a propensity maybe to want to escape, you know, but don't, don't escape into who you thought you were or who you were in the past. This is about actually, actually Pisces, having some kind of concrete like action or goal or something to strive for. Pisces, you always want to be so floaty and have like a little bit of everything. This is actually about, it's like, okay, who am I? 
And do I value who I am? It's easy for you to just try and escape and stuff like that and try to be other things and be all these different things. You want to just be like this traveling, hippie, mystic, whatever like that. But the universe is asking you to actually be someone, be something. But then take that magic that you are and channel that in. Like, this is not about just, you know, that's the thing about it. Pisces is, I swear y'all do this. Y'all don't realize how magical you freaking are. Y'all really don't because it's just second nature to you guys. It's second nature. But if you can realize how magical you are and actually take that magic and hone in on it and actually do something intentional with it, imagine the kind of things that you could do. Imagine the kind of change that you could bring to this world. But you're so just happy and you're so just okay with just it's like okay just because you were born with this magic and born with this propensity and this just because you were born with this almost like you take it for granted it's like you take it for granted almost but just don't take the magic of who you are for granted do something with it do something with it Pisces, you're having to almost, this is like a release of your spiritual trust fund, if you will, in many ways. Or realizing the real trust fund of what it is, right? But there's this element here, Pisces, where it's felt like, like I said, you're kind of born with this, so you kind of take it for granted. Whereas other people have to like really work at that shit, Right? But imagine if you were actually intentional about it. Imagine what would happen. So that's the 12 signs. I'm going to go ahead and draw another card for the collective, and then we will end this video. I hope that that helped you all. Um, I probably will put some timestamps in the description. So for the 12 signs. Um, I didn't think about writing it down as I was going because I just wanted it to flow and everything too. So, um, or if that you can watch for all 12 signs because you are all 12 signs, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, people with other signs. So I would actually recommend just watching all of it. Right. So, but yeah, this full moon in Aries, it's definitely going to be a time where, you know, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a release and it's definitely sparking off and kicking off what October is going to be be on. So it may feel a little bit dramatic. It may feel a little intense and stuff too, but I think it'll be a very powerful moment for realizing who we are, looking at our habits and realizing that those things do become our character and what we can, what can we, what can we establish, you know, so we can move forward and become the greatest versions of ourselves. Right. And yes, that, and yes, that's the thing about this is that if it comes to that, being doing at it from a diplomatic point of view isn't necessarily going to be the best because you've been diplomatic for such a long time and trying to make deals. This is about being the warrior and actually just putting yourself out there and doing the damn thing, doing the damn thing instead of compromising yourself and outsourcing who you really are to appease others. It's about doing the damn thing and being who you are. It's very simple. Who are you? In ways you are your habits, you are the people that you hang out with. But ultimately, you are an infinite spark of the divine, so you can be anything you fucking want to be. So why limit yourself? Part I have for everybody I got the Hierophant again, but it's in reverse. <laughs> I got the Hierophant again, but in reverse. I told you that the, they're going to try, and this Puppet Master is going to try and send agents at you. Are you going to allow these agents to take over your body? Or are you going to fight these agents? You don't have to actually fight anybody today, right? Although with the full moon in Aries on a Friday, 
I would probably avoid bars and clubs because there's definitely going to be some fights. And the fights aren't going to be personal because they're just going to be wearing their Chiron on their sleeve and shit like that or as their mask. And you know, people will just get into fights. It'll make for good entertainment, but people will just get into fights over shit. This is literally the kind of energy where someone goes to the bar because someone broke up with them and then someone accidentally bumps into them and then they get really pissed off and they're already drunk and then they get into a bar fight and they get thrown out and then they go to jail for the night. Don't get caught up in that energy, man. I'm telling you. When they send the agents, are you going to listen to, but you know what's right? Your heart is higher spiritual source if you will or are you going to listen to those who claim to know what's best for you i also have the eight of bows in reverse this is the eight of swords this is about getting out of your own way and stop like you not holding yourself back anymore don't hold yourself back if people respond volatilely to who you are and what you're trying to express, don't get into the arguments with them. Walk away. This is not a time to get into these arguments. It's going to be really petty. Walk away. And walk towards those that will accept and embrace you for who you are and that will help you. Like this man is helping, like this shaman is helping this one guy. And you have like the freaking bird up there shining the light down, right? That's the interesting thing about this is that. It's like he's kind of he's kind of stuck. He's probably doing some type of like ceremony, if you will. Probably took some sort of drug, did some type of ceremony. Are you going to accept the help of this individual? Are you going to accept the help of God and of spirits? Bottom of the deck. Yeah, interesting. I got the hermit. So all the cards are reversed. This is really <laughs> it's about getting out of your own way, not accepting, not just blanketly accepting the uh, like the authority of other people because they think they know what's better for you. Remember, it's like a puppet master, right? You got to go to the beat of your own drum, right? And with this hermit card in reverse too, like. It's, it's interesting, too, is that we have to go within and find our own light. You know what I'm saying? We have to go within and find our own light. But we also can't be afraid to seek out others and to try and be and try and connect with other people and be extroverted. But we also we have to just know and have the wherewithal, like the wherewithal to be like, well, the people I connect with are very, very important, too. So that's the thing. No, like no person is an island onto themselves, you know, and you can be a star. You can be a star, but you have to realize that you are also part of a constellation. So if you're part of a constellation, you have to ask yourself, what stars are you, are, are you around? So you may be so focused on stars that are over here in other constellations that you can't even see where you are right now, right? So you are a star. We are all stars, but we all have to find our natural constellation if you will and that's where we're going to end this video <laughs> um y'all have a happy full moon in aries hopefully this helped you guys hopefully it assists you on your journey today and going forward and yeah y'all take care stay blessed have a wonderful day that's going to do it for your astrological forecast for this full moon in aries like, share, and subscribe if this resonated with you. Share it with your friends and your family. And, yeah, I will see you guys on the weekend astrology forecast. Peace. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Boom. I forgot to make that bigger when I was showing the cards. It's all good, though. Bye-bye. <laughs>